there's no reason why that couldn't be your story. You don't have an expiration date. Oh, I love that. This is the Authors and Agents Podcast. Oh, I'm so excited for you to be here with me today, Elliot, and to chat about your books and your journey. So let's start off by talking about your your latest release here, Whiskey Business. Give me a little blurb for that one. Okay, I've got it here. So, um, so it all um, starts with April. So we have April. Um, she's a like uh, she's a successful film star, previous successful film star. Her um, career's kind of hit standstill. And so she's kind of doing like, you know, like the celebrity shows, like celebrity dancing, celebrity cooking, Mm. those ones. So she um, inherits from her grandfather on the Isle of Skye in Scotland. She inherits um, a small whiskey distillery. So it's a perfect time for her to go back there and take over the the family business. And then that brings in Mal, Um, Malcolm. um, He's a shy but, uh, but grumpy master distiller who's doesn't doesn't like too much uh actress coming in to take over so lots and of you fun comes from there yeah lots of fun comes from there you can you lots can tell just kind of what the d- dynamic will be so exciting <laughs> <laughs> and and the cover is beautiful such great artwork on yeah there. yeah i'll show you again in like ink and laurel um is a designer yeah. you probably like recognize her work by now she's She's incredible. She is quite incredible. Well, this is so yeah. exciting. So this is a re-release of Whiskey Business, which is so mm-hmm. wonderful. But, you know, tell me about your journey to this point through publishing, because I know you also published The Paris Syndrome as well. So kind of give me kind of give me the lowdown on what happened there. Okay, so um, The Paris Syndrome was, was really kind of like a random passion project of mine. I was working on a fantasy novel at the time and that was kind of when covid happened lockdown happened and i was about seventy thousand words in it was going terribly i think at that point i was trying to write like a a bookshop worthy book on my first on Mm. my first draft and i really wasn't i couldn't understand why it wasn't working um and our holiday to paris got cancelled because of covid so i was like oh i'm just gonna like write something and like i think emily in paris had just come on tv as well so i was like i'm just gonna write something set in paris and like live vicariously through this this story and so i sat on it for i finished it sat on it for about six months i was like this is the worst thing that's ever existed um <laughs> and then i think i yeah left it for about six months came back to it and i was like it's not actually that bad maybe i'll polish it up self-publish it see what happens yeah, so, so I enjoyed that. I think, I think yeah, space kind of like gives you room to be like, it's not as bad as I thought it was like, when you come back with fresh eyes. Yeah, so enjoying that, that's when I was like, oh, I finished one book, I can write another one. So that's when I knew I wanted to write something. Like, I live in, in Edinburgh, so something a bit closer to home, something Scottish. Well, you know, I, I love that. I love that you were able to take a passion projects of yours and, and, and take that time and space and then be like, okay, yeah, this is good. And I could actually publish it myself, which obviously was very successful for you. Um, so whiskey business was originally self-published now is being re re released. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be two more in that series. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're following, um, the McKay brothers. So yeah, we've got the youngest brother, Mal. Um, and then his two his two older brothers will be following them and their stories, which I'm having a lot of fun with. Oh, I love it. I love those kinds of interconnected series where you've got like family and all the siblings and all of that. So that is is quite wonderful. So yeah. looking back on your your journey to this point, um, you know, like what would your advice be for an author who I mean, maybe is at the point where you were with like your fantasy novel, like you're so far in, it's Mm -hmm. not what you're wanting it to be. And like, what would you, what advice would you give to maybe yourself at that point? Yeah, I think now it would be that it's, it's okay to take your time. Mm -hmm. I think, I think publishing feels like, like it feels like it's a race. And I think there's no, I don't think anybody's immune from that unless maybe you're, you know, a, you know, New York Times bestseller. The, everybody else, I think we feel like we're part of a race. If social media does feel that way, but it's okay to write a project, and it's not wasted time if you don't finish it. 
no time. Writing is wasted time. It, you know, you, you don't have to get it right on the first go. And I think that's still advice I'm trying to tell myself in my first draft. So it's okay. It's okay. That it's not. It's not great right off the bat. <laughs> and because it, it often isn't. <laughs> No, it often isn't. <laughs> but you know what? You are so correct. No time writing is ever time wasted. Yeah, yeah. We all yeah. need that advice because our first drafts are usually not <laughs> what we want them to be, right? But you have to have something down on paper mm -hmm. to then take it and make it what you want it to yeah. be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, but it's okay to, you know, take your time and learn your craft and, and, uh, you know it's not gonna the publishing industry in to a sense is still gonna be there it's not gonna run away from you yeah even when it feels like everybody else is going faster than you or doing all the things you want to have you know want to do um there's still a place yeah, and a space for own, you to do it our own journey yeah yeah definitely well thinking about whiskey business and you know this this romance, this love story that you've created here for us, what is something you hope readers will take away from it? Um, I, I think just like, I want people to feel joyful at the end. The, like a lot of, a lot of readers, you know, tell me that they're like, oh, it was such a good palate cleanser. And I don't mm -hmm. take any insult to that. Like, with, like when I was writing it, I wanted it to be, um, you know, just this story that you want to come back to again and again. If you're having a really rubbish day, if you're ill and you just want that, I, I really wanted to write just a comfort book that you feel like safe and happy in that world. And, and that's what I want people to take away from it. I want it to be that kind of like a warm hug of a book. I love that. Yes. I want every book I read to be a warm hug. Sometimes I'm in the mood for something yeah. that's not so yeah. warm hug, but it is so nice mm -hmm. when you pick up a book and you're like, I'm going to feel yeah. good after reading this. <laughs> yeah. Just a book that you want to go back to and you want to read your favorite scenes again, even if you don't read the whole thing. Those are my favorites, yeah. the ones that stick with you. Yeah, I love that. Well, when you're reading for pleasure, you're looking for that, you know, warm <laughs> hug yourself, maybe. Um, what are, who are some of your <clears throat> favorite authors to read? <clears throat> um, obviously, like, um, like powerhouses. We've got like Tessa Bailey, um, Kennedy Ryan. Um, yeah, like Tessa Bailey. Um, Kennedy Ryan, like amazing, amazing romance authors that I really look up to. But I think also kind of people who I've seen um, kind of have started maybe around the same time I did, you know, like I love Hannah Bonham Young, um, mm. Hannah Grace, Ivy Fairbanks, they're all people that I, I love to read their work. I just recently read my first one of Hannah's and it was so good. It was very much like a warm hug. I was oh, like, which oh, one? so I which read, one did you read out on a limb, which, you know, like there's some deeper I things in that. there too, but I was just like, Oh, I <laughs> love it so much. <laughs> I love like Wynn and Bo. They're just, they're, they are yes. magic. She's yeah. She's bottled magic in that book. It's amazing. She and I'm so excited that like um, out on a limb re-releases the same day whiskey business does. So I'm, I, I love oh. that for me. <laughs> I love that for you too. <laughs> that is a very <laughs> special connection right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Hannah, my book's coming out the same day yours is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's be best friends <laughs> forever and ever. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, th thinking about the actual like act of writing, you know, what is the, mm -hmm. the most challenging thing for you about writing? And then what's your favorite thing about writing? Oh, okay. Um, I think the most challenging is, is probably again, the same one that a lot of authors have. I think it's, it's so one would be self doubt. Um, that I think first drafts in particular are very hard that they feel like you, you can't see the end of it. It's always, it always feels bad. And I think, um, you know, I'll always be like so grateful that this is, this is my job, um, that I get to do this for a living. But I think also when you care so much, it's everything. Um, the, yeah, yeah, it's like, it's all I can think about. Like when I'm falling to sleep, it's or like what I'm working on. It's, it's, I'm replaying the plot in my head and it's like, I can't move on from it. Um, but I think what I love the most is, again, that I get to do this. I think as, as a child, my parents used to tell me that I was like always in my own little world. And now I get to live in that little world and I get to put these characters on paper and that's, that's amazing. 
That's the best. I think, you know, you, it's sort of like a double-edged sword because it's your job. You get to do it, which is like, oh my gosh, best thing ever. But Mm -hmm. then it's your job. You get to do it. But you also like, Mm -hmm. it's so much harder to separate yourself from it. Like you're saying, you're going to sleep. You're thinking about the plot. You're thinking about, oh, what can I do here and here? It's not like a nine to five where you clock in and you're able to clock Mm -hmm. out and be like, okay, bye. I'm going to go back to my house. Like, yeah. No, it is all encompassing sometimes, especially when you're in the thick of drafting or in the thick of revisions, right? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very consuming. It consumes all of you. And I think it's probably the same for most people, but I love it. And it it also comes with, yeah, the, the pressure that when you cannot switch off. Yeah. And I guess when you can't switch it off, you pick up your favorite palette cleanser, warm hug, hug book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's what I, that's what I always like fixes me or, tr- you know, like helps refill my, my well in those times. I'm like, okay, I just need to like, forget about it for a second and get lost in something else mm-hmm. or reread something I know is really, you know, lovely. Mm-hmm. Well, thinking forward, thinking ahead, you know, if you were to ever genre hop, try something different. I know you were working on a fantasy that maybe wasn't quite right. Would you ever go back to mm-hmm. fantasy? Like, what is what is something you'd love to try writing yeah. again? Yeah, I love I love fantasy. I would always love to go back to go back to that. Um, I think fantasy is kind of my com- always my comfort read. Um, mm. I unashamedly read Twilight until I'm eighty years old. I will pick that book up again and again. Um, yeah, I That's love so I love that series. Um, but also, I would love to write maybe like a um, a closed door murder mystery. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm like if I have the brains for it. I don't know. <laughs> but I love those. You know, like Knives Out. I love oh, yeah. that film so much. So I think it's brilliant. But yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe one day. <laughs> Yeah, one day. You have lots of time. You don't have to, like, rush into anything yeah. else. But, um, yeah, I I were, you know, I, I know Twilight is beloved by lots of people and also, like, you know, made fun of by lots of people. But I remember the just mm-hmm. obsession of reading it when I was a teenager and just being like, this is the greatest yeah. thing in the whole entire world. Yeah. So great. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I think because at that time... I didn't think there was much else for teenage, like teenage girls at the time. I think it kind of, it did set off, you know, like a whole, like, um, like generation of books. Cause there was nothing else for me at that time. It didn't feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing else that was. So so... It really was like reading Twilight was an eye opener. Yeah, it was. And I think for some people, I've heard from other authors that like reading Twilight made them realize like, oh, I could write a book too, right? Like, which I think is is yeah. great um, too. I think it spurred a love for reading for a lot of people and it made a lot of people think, mm-hmm. oh, I could actually do this and I could, I could write my own, you know, yeah. whatever it wanted to be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't feel like I am at all unique. In, in my love of that series. <laughs> There's lots of other people out there with you. <laughs> yeah. Just a few. So over your, your writing journey, who have been your biggest supporters? Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, definitely my husband. He, I think he's read probably every word I've ever written. He's, he, he's not a romance reader. Mm-hmm. In in any way, I think I'm the only the only romance novels he reads. But he gives me his feedback. He reads everything. He yeah, he's definitely my biggest cheerleader. I think when I first I when I first that. started self publishing, I think I was so anxious to kind of start the journey. He was the only person who knew. So it wasn't until um, Whiskey Business got um, picked up traditionally that I told anybody else that I, that I was writing. So it was just kind of mine and his little secret that. <laughs> that we were sitting on. <laughs> well, how nice that and and supportive of him, right? Like it's it's so nice to have people in the industry who understand all of it, what's going on. But I mean, to have your 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 person at home be you know championing you is so great. And and mm-hmm. I love that he he was able to branch out from his usual reading patterns <laughs> to to enjoy the romance that that <laughs> yeah. you've created. Yeah, he's a, he's a- <laughs> Yeah, he's a fantasy person, like, through and through. Hmm. 
Yeah, romance is different, but it is great, and I love that for you that he's been there with yeah. you every step of the way. <laughs> yeah, so he, he gives me recommendations, and I'm like, is there a rom- romantic subplot? Like, yeah. who's getting together in this? And then I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just got a couple of questions off for you, but um, I'd love to know when you're writing. You know, maybe okay. what's your favorite like writing fuel, like writing snack or drink that you've got to have to like help you keep going. Mm -hmm. um either like um if i'm out if i'm at a coffee shop coffee iced latte if it's like warm enough in scotland for me to drink it (laughs) if i'm at home it'll be like lemon tea probably um Mm. and if i could i would eat like cinnamon buns every day of the week (laughs) but i try i try not (laughs) to Maybe not the best choice to eat cinnamon buns every day, mm-hmm. but maybe one day a week, yeah, right? Just Enjoy three, them. Just three. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Or three. <laughs> yeah. Yum. Well, <laughs> cinnamon buns. Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> uh, well, I'd love, I'd love to know what your favorite book is right now. This is not your favorite book of all time. Just something you've read recently okay. that you have really enjoyed that you want other people to have on their radar. Okay. Um, well, I'm currently I'm kind of doing two things. I'm currently I'm listening to Tessa Dare's like whole backlog on Audible, which like, she's incredible. I love Tessa Dare. Um, I love her historical romance. I think it's a little. Um, I feel safe going to historical romance while I'm do- while I'm writing. So that's kind of that's what I fall back into. But I've also oh, I've got it here, what I've been reading. Um, again, it's historical YA. So it's called The Agency for Scandal by Laura Wood. Ooh. So it's kind of, it feels kind of Bridgerton um, with spies. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you for sharing those. I love historical romance, historical mm-hmm. fiction. And yeah, I could see how that could be like feel safer when you're writing something contemporary of the same genre but it's not like you're gonna suck it up and uh, yeah you know transfer mm-hmm. <laughs> unintentionally yeah. right mm-hmm. yeah historical so great yeah it's a nice escape <laughs> well I'm so excited for you to have Whiskey Business come back out into the world and Thank be re-released you. with this beautiful cover on the the 4th of June. So everyone, please make sure to to Mm pre-order it for the next few days and then, you know, help give Elliot cheers. And do we have any release dates or anything for like the next one in the series or not yet? Um, that isn't a, um, set release date yet. I will will be putting, like splashing it on socials when I know, but I know they've just started on the cover. So, and we've decided the title, which I can't say yet. But I'm, I'm very okay. excited to see the covers because I've kind of heard the plan they have for it and it's going to be fun. Oh, <laughs> I'm excited. So everyone, make sure to watch your socials and so we can see all this wonderful information of yeah. of next the next book in the series. Well, so excited mm-hmm. and, you know, so glad you were able to to go on this journey and have these wonderful things happen to you. And it has has been a pleasure. So thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I've had so much fun.